Hey everyone, Madurai Bread here. Pokemon Gold with only one Rotata was brutal at the end. Let's follow that up with a run that might have an even harder ending. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Emerald with a team of only one Meg Cargo. So the first thing you're probably asking is why we're using an evolved Pokemon. Well, lots of you suggested this run, and you usually say that we should use Meg Cargo instead of Slugma, since Meg Cargo is fire and rock type. Considering the Pokemon Champion is water type, being rock and fire might actually make Meg Cargo harder to use, especially since his stats are almost the same as Slugma, just with triple the defense and double the special defense. Every other stat will hardly raise at all, leaving us with terrible speed, health, and attack. By level up, Slugma and Mascar Go learn basically the same moves, so I'll just show you Meg Cargo's moves. Well, it's got some decent stuff, but not much of it that we'll keep. Flamethrower is great, and we can probably use Rock Slide at least a bit, but by the time we get Body Slam, we'll probably already have Return. By TM, we can learn a couple of cool things like Overheat and Earthquake, but our low attack means that we might just stick with Flamethrower most of the time. Probably Fire Blast too, since it's almost as strong as Overheat and doesn't have the major drawback. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm sure that I can beat Wallace eventually, but it wouldn't surprise me if I need to be level 80 or above just to win with sheer power. Our low speed and health mixed with a double type weakness to water is probably going to make that fight nearly impossible. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Slugma and Meg Cargo. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Oh, and we have a new sponsor later in the video. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Torchic with Slugma so that we can do the whole run with it. I picked to replace Torchic so that our rival would have Mudkip, probably the hardest for us to fight. Our nature is mild, so less defense and more special attack. Well, that's gonna make the Rock Gym brutal, but once we evolve, this'll probably be the optimal nature. At least I think. For ability, we have Flame Body, so sometimes enemies burn themselves when attacking us with physical moves. I doubt it's really gonna save us much, but I don't mind that ability. Oh, and we only start with Smog and Yawn, so super weak moves to level 8 when we get Ember. I name him, I name him Ma Cargo, because that's hilarious. So, early travel. It starts a little rough just because Smog isn't 100% accurate and it only has 20 power, but we get Ember so early that it doesn't really matter that much. Fights here aren't bad, but you know it's all building up to that Rock Gym fight. Now, just because we're a special attacker doesn't mean that this will go well. Normally, brute forcing an early game Rock Gym with fire moves isn't that bad because at least it bypasses their high defense, but Roxanne actually uses Rock Tomb. Considering I'm expecting to have a speed disadvantage unless we're a high level, Rock Tomb will ensure we lose any speed advantage that we end up getting. Plus, we're super frail until we get to level 38 when we evolve. Naturally, I fight everything on my way to the Rock Gym, knowing that I'll probably need to. Think I'll be ready by the time we get there? I'm kinda thinking I'll have to grind quite a bit. So by the time we get to the Rock Gym, we're level 15. We actually ended up beating the first Geodude due to him missing his Rock Tomb and us burning him, but it was all luck. The moment he went down, the next Geodude hit Rock Tomb for more than three quarters of our health and damage, so we lost. Alright, grinding. Kind of expected this. I almost always have to grind here. We don't evolve until level 38, so we can't grind till that, and our next attacking move isn't until level 37 with Flamethrower, so I don't think we are getting to that now either. We don't really have many options but to level up until we can just brute force our way through the fight with Ember. I'd use Yawn, but we kind of need the burn damage to actually take these guys down, and Yawn gives them an opening to hit us anyway. Plus, one Rock Tomb and I'm sure we'd lose our speed advantage. We get hardened soon, but I can't see that being worth it, so I think we just have to level until Ember is enough. What level do you think we'll need to be? Let me know in the comments. My personal guess is 23. Okay, next try at level 20. We can two-shot the Geodudes with Ember now, but they can three-shot us with Rock Tomb. You'd think that would mean we can take out two Geodudes, but because of the speed loss, we end up being slower than the second one. 
On this very lucky attempt though, the second Geodude missed tackle, so we got the knockout. Right after his nose pass, who also missed tackle, but hardly takes any damage from Ember, so we went down anyway. Man, maybe I'm gonna need to be even higher than level 23. Alright, a few tries at level 23 itself. So we actually do enough damage that we can make Roxanne waste all of her potions on her Geodude. Unfortunately, the moment Nose Pass comes out, we still just lose to Rock Tomb. That's with us walking into the fight with more health thanks to burning the second Geodude. It only takes one Rock Tomb for Nose Pass to be faster than us, so we actually have to grind even more. Level 25! This one was heartbreaking. The Geodudes went fine, although we didn't burn them this time, so we still just walked into the Nose Pass fight pretty hurt. I assumed we'd lose when suddenly she just started using Harden and Block, wasting tons of turns. I was literally one attack away from getting the feint when she suddenly decided to use Rock Tomb again to knock us out. Alright, it takes forever, but I'm gonna just grind up a little bit more and hope that I'm faster. We may only be a couple levels away from one-shotting the Geodudes anyway, and that would save us tons of damage. Okay, quite a few tries later at level 27, and things are going pretty much the exact same as usual, but this time we completely lucked out when she tackled us, getting burnt in the process. That means that we are no longer in the knockout range from Rock Tomb, and we finally could get the win. You guys have no idea how long that grind was. Alright, with that done, we just have to make our way over to the fighting gym. We're pretty overleveled, so I would hope that we won't have any serious issues there, but at the same time, we've got low health and defense, and Makahita has a reputation for wrecking us with Vital Throw. We could luck out, and he might just burn himself, though. Fighting gym time. Ember nearly one-shot Machop, but he just used Bulk Up and a Super Potion, so we just two-shot him. Meditite just used Bulk Up and Focus Punch, of course. He goes down easily. Last was Makahita, so I started hitting Ember as he used Bulk Up and Vital Throw. It did great damage, but it burned him, so his reversal after didn't do much. Still, we were almost in red health as we got the win. I can't believe how frail we are. So, I'm really not sure how the next chunk of the game is gonna go. We've got a rival fight and the electric gym next. The rival fight will probably be bad thanks to Mudkip with Mudshot, but for once, the electric gym after might not be that bad. Usually we get stuck on Magneton, but between his low health and our Ember, I think we might just one-shot him. If it ends up being way worse than expected though, I could see us having to grind for Flamethrower. The main reason why I have no idea how it will go is because we're really slow and electric types are typically pretty fast, so it might take a while before we're faster and don't just get paralyzed, because when we get paralyzed then who knows what happens. Before that though, the rival fight. It started great with Lombre going down in two hits with him only getting us with a weak swift. Second was Maze Slugma, and I just one-shot it with Rock Throw, but last was Marsh Stomp, who resists both of our moves and extremely easily took us out with Mud Shot, as expected. Well, there's no TMs I can get right now that would help at all, so I actually have to grind. We're still a solid 6 levels away from Flamethrower and 8 levels away from Evolving, but the funny thing is, Evolving might make the fight worse. As soon as we evolve, we triple our defense and double our special defense, but every other stat only gains a base of 10 or so, so just about nothing. Triple the defense sounds great till you remember that we become double weak to ground and water, both types that May has. Sure, we'll have more defense or mudshot, but it's also going to be doing 4 times damage instead of double, and we'll still be slower after it hits us. It might actually be easier if I just don't evolve until after the fight, but this is the Meg Cargo challenge run, so I kind of feel like I should evolve as soon as I'm at the right level. I'll try getting to level 38, then I'll do the fight again, and if it still goes horribly, then I'll get to level 36 for Flamethrower. If we still somehow can't win, then level 38 for the evolution, and we'll just see what happens. Okay, so at level 34, we had such a weird fight. Instead of just beating us with Mudshot, she used Bide. Well, that just gave us an opening to use Yawn and Amnesia, so as soon as she fell asleep, we finished it off in a couple shots of Amber. I don't know why she did that, but I'll take it. 
Now let's go take a shot at the electric gym, just to see how well we do. We're level 35, and it's time for the electric gym. It starts pretty badly, with a long fight with Voltorb, resulting in it just blowing up on us, so we went to low health pretty early. Electric was a one-shot, and after was Magneton, who took us down to red health before we could one-shot him with a critical ember. Hey, we learned Flamethrower with that knockout. Not that it could save us, Manetric just quick attacked us to take us down. On the next try with Flamethrower from the start, we do much better, taking a lot less damage before getting to Manetric. We still take a bit of a beating and almost fell into red health, but Flamethrower is just so much stronger. The next two fights coming up have me pretty worried, not gonna lie. We've got Maxi and Flannery coming up, and both of them have ground types that could really mess us up. We're level 37, so we're about to evolve, and that will make us go from taking double damage from ground moves to quadruple. So I'm basically just hoping that we're faster and really, really mess them up with Flamethrower. That and that our high defense stat is enough that we can tank some ground moves in spite of our massive type disadvantage. When we evolved, our defense went from 39 to 94. That is huge. That's with a nature that gives us less defense too. Our special attack only went from 79 to 86 though, not nearly as impressive. In fact, our health, speed, and attack all hardly increased. Still, the fact that our special attack is anywhere near our defense is thanks to that nature. While we're traveling, it's a good time to talk about this week's sponsor, and it's a new one! It's Surfshark VPN, a virtual private network app that I've been using for years. You guys know that I love wrestling, right? Of course you do, I never shut up about it. Well, Surfshark has been a part of my daily routine for the last two years because of it. Yeah, I actually checked the number of years. Here's an old email from when I first signed up for Surfshark. I've been a customer since way before this ad. Anyway, check this out. I love me some All Elite Wrestling, but you can't watch it in Canada without a TV subscription, something I don't have. But AEW is still available overseas on Fight TV, so I just boot up Surfshark on my phone, click on Manchester, load up AEW on my phone to cast it to my TV, and check it out! Same thing works on any device, by the way. Here's me doing the same thing on my browser, at my computer. Same Surfshark account, same device, all super easy. Look, I even have one on my Chromecast. When I said this is on all of your devices, I really mean it. You can use this to access other countries' versions of other websites too, like Netflix, Tubi, and Crunchyroll. It's not just for wrestling. That's just my obsession. You can also use it for a litany of other things, like to help you keep your data safe while using public Wi-Fi, accessing websites even if your country bans them, and even to keep watching shows that are available in your native country while you're abroad. Seriously though, use a VPN when you're on public Wi-Fi. Public Wi-Fi is terrifying. If you want to sign up, then there's a pretty massive discount you can grab. You can enter the code MDB for 83% off and three months free. Yes, that is 83% off, also known as 17% on. To say that's a steal is an understatement. When was the last time you've paid 17% for anything? A Steam sale? Probably a Steam sale. Check out the link at the top of the description if you want to sign up and give it a try today. I highly recommend it. Now, I'm gonna go try that maxi fight. My Deanna was a one-shot with Flamethrower, but it's got Intimidate, so our attack is down. Because of that, Rock Throw didn't do as much damage as I was hoping against Camerupt, but it just wasted its turn with Focus Energy instead of a ground move. Flamethrower crit, so we took him out. Last was Zubat, who couldn't handle Flamethrower. Will the fire gym be as easy? First is Numel. I picked up a charcoal while I was in town to power up Flamethrower, so I gave it a try here and actually one-shotted Numel and Slugma. Camerupt had me super worried, but once we actually fought it, instead of using Magnitude, he used Tackle. So, you know, he did two damage and we took him out. Man, the AI has been terrible today. Last was Torkoal, so I hit a rock throw for decent damage. She used Sunny Day, and I took the opportunity to use my newly powered up flamethrower for the win. That went so much better than I expected. Let's bike over to the normal gym. But on our way there, I took the root fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Alright, so we're at the normal gym. Spinda was an easy one-shot with flamethrower, and second was slacking. Right away he hit us with facade and it ended up burning him. 
I mean, the burn would have powered up Facade if he was burned first, but there is no consolation prize for that, so I just took him out. Vigoroth right after was a one-shot, and Lanoon just used Belly Dance, so we easily finished it off. Easy as usual. We're heading north now. We've got the last required rival fight in the Flying Gym coming up. The rival was pretty hard last time we fought her, but the last rival fight is usually the only time the rival is actually hard. The upcoming rival fight is usually an easy one, so I'm not really too worried. Right after is the Flung Gym, and although we do have Rock Throw, it's not the best move ever. We're really close to level 48 though, and that's when we get Rock Slide, so we might have that by the time we get there. Rival fight! Okay, so it's actually raining here, so our fire moves do less damage. We couldn't one-shot Lombre because of that, although he did just about nothing with nature power. Slugma went down in one hit after we missed the first rock throw, but she just used Harden. Last was Marsh Stomp, and we were hardly doing any damage, but we still managed to get a burn in early, and it's a good thing we did since he was using Mudshot. I ended up using Yawn even though he was burned, because I wasn't thinking, but the burn lowered the amount of damage he was doing by so much that we ended up overpowering him and winning in the end anyway. I think I would have lost that fight easily if he were just using water moves rather than ground ones. Time for the Flying Gym. Swab Blue was a one-shot with Rock Slide, as was Pelipper right after. Altaria was next and hits us right away with Earthquake. We took her to red health, but she used a full restore, and she has the speed advantage, so it gave her another hit in on us. Two Earthquakes took us to only 14 health, as we got the knockout. Next was Skarmory, who we outsped and one-shot with Flamethrower, and last was Tropius, who also went down in one Flamethrower. All it takes is one fast Pokémon with Earthquake, and we take tons of damage. Okay, we're getting into that part of the game where things get brutal. Maxi probably won't be too hard, but shortly after is the Double Battle Psychic Gym, where they just outnumber us. That one is always horrible, but considering half their team is Rock-type, they'll resist us. They do like using Sunny Day though, so maybe that could help us out. Not long after that though is the Water Gym, and that's obviously going to be hard. I'm gonna be honest, I have no real answers prepared for the big water fights of the game. I plan to just go in there and see what happens. I mean, what do you think's gonna happen when we get to the water gym? Because I'm assuming we won't even get halfway through. I like when you guys make guesses in the comments though, because it's fun. Okay, I actually didn't see this coming, but Maxi is gonna be a problem. Mightyana is easy, but the attack drop from Intimidate makes it so Rock Slide does less than half of Camerup's health and damage, and he just one-shots us with Earthquake. We would need two flinches to win, and that's a lot of luck especially considering the move can miss. So this was a terrible place to have to grind. Maxi is in the Team Magma base, so not exactly close to a Poke Center. I ended up having to fly real far away to actually get a few levels. Unlike in a gym where I can just walk in and try again each level if I want to, it's a long trip to get to Maxi, so I have to really make sure that I'm ready to win before I go back in there. We were really close to taking out half of his health, so I figured with a few more levels we should be able to win on runs where we get him to flinch. We just have to deal at least half of his health and damage, then we should be good. Hey, if Earthquake was that bad despite our high defense, does that mean Surf will just be a one-shot? Probably. So, at level 55, I had four runs where Earthquake just one-shot us, but I thought a flinch could probably save us. On one try though, we just survived Earthquake. Thanks to Max using super potions over and over, we actually ended up getting the knockout with a crit. The problem is, Crobat right after just takes us out with bite. Okay, I really do need that flinch. Alright, the very next try and we flinch camera up to then crit on the next round to take it out. It doesn't matter the Crobat right after made us hit ourselves in confusion multiple times in a row, it can hardly hurt us on its own. If we got shut down that hard by Earthquake, how bad is the Psychic Gym's Clay Doll gonna be? Last minute preparations before the Psychic Gym now. I could go make the Shell Bell so that we can start healing based on the damage we deal, although the Charcoal for extra Flamethrower damage could still end up being more useful. It takes a while to make a Shell Bell anyway, so I'll grab some of the stuff for it now, try the Psychic Gym, then I'll get the rest of it and make the Shell Bell later if I think it could get us the win. Let's first try the Psychic Gym at level 60. You know what? I thought it would go worse. 
Earthquake hurt us pretty badly, but Flamethrower did a lot, and Sunny Day let us still get the one shot after Clay Doll healed. We still lost in the end due to that huge amount of damage we took up front, but I bet if I came back a few levels higher, then we could one shot him right away and not have to deal with Earthquake. Next bunch of tries was at level 64. We can one shot Clay Doll, although this time we just crit. Rock Slide hit the whole enemy team, so I was really hoping for flinches, but I've had no luck with it so far. Lunatone seems to be a real issue in these attempts, as it just keeps using Calm Mind and Light Screen so we can hardly hurt it. Plus, they use tons of healing items, and sometimes they even put us to sleep. Soul Rock basically can't hurt us since it just spams a super weak Solar Beam and Psychic, but it didn't really matter. We lost so many turns to Confusion, and they raised their special defense far too much. Let me just say, the grinding in this part is pretty brutal. Easily one of the most brutal grinds I've had in a while. Leveling is very slow until we get to at least Victory Road, and that's still two gym battles away. Part of me is happy that the end is in sight with this Psychic Gym, since it doesn't seem like they can hurt us too much with Clay Doll down early, but I'm worried about the Water Gym. Seriously, I think we could be level 80 and still get one shot by Surf. Either we'll get brick walled by the Water Gym, by Wallace at the end of the game, or more likely both. If you want to give back for the countless hours I waste every week for your entertainment, then share the video around. Link it to your friends and tell them that some idiot decided to try and beat the Too Much Water Pokemon game with a single Rock and Fire type Pokemon, and that it's going as horribly as they would guess. Okay, you have to see this try at level 68. I one-shot Clay Doll, of course, then we started spamming out Rock Slides. It started amazingly, flinching Lunatone two whole turns in a row. We missed it on the first one, but it's still not that bad. Problem is, they have Hyper Potions. A lot of them. And they just keep healing Zatu every turn. It's nice that Zatu isn't attacking, but you'll see why that's a problem in a moment. This battle is packed, so you might want to watch along. I can't recap all of this. After three Hyper Potions, we finally managed to take out Lunatone, but Zatu is still up, and we're now confused with Confuse Ray. That's when it all turns around. They use their fourth Hyper Potion, and we start hitting ourselves in confusion over and over and over. We lost four whole turns to confusion in a fight that we absolutely should have won. Feels pretty heartbreaking to lose like that right after a long grind period. I'll give it a few more tries. Next try starts with Clay Doll going down in one hit, then Rock Slide missed Lunatone but crit Zatu for a one shot. I thought it could finally be the winning attempt until we got put to sleep for four turns and we got chipped away at two on one. There's a reason why I work long on Fridays when doing Emerald runs, and it's usually this fight. Two levels later and we finally get another run where we crit Zatu to take him out early. This time they just don't even try to put us to sleep, so we pretty easily just used Rock Slide and Flamethrowers till they went down. That took so many tries you guys don't even know. Alright, with that done we just have the Archie fight and the Water Gym left. Oh, and of course the Wally fight, but he's just about always a sweep. Archie is the team Aqua leader, but I seem to remember him basically never using water moves, so I think he'll be easy. Water Gym though? I think we're gonna be stuck for ages. I don't normally need to grind much for the Water Gym, but this time, I think I'll really have to. Only one way to find out. Well, at least Archie was a sweep with Flamethrower. Don't think the Water Gym will go quite like that. Alright, the Water Gym. First is Love Disc, who is just a one-shot with Flamethrower. Second is Celio, but thanks to him being part Ice, Rock Slide was a one-shot on him too. Crawdont went down in one Flamethrower. This is a great start! Next is Whiskash, and this is a dangerous one. I hit Body Slam, we lost half our health to Earthquake, then we finished it with another Slam. Last is Kingdra, but he just outsped us and took us out with Water Pulse. I'm sure that could have one-shot us even if we had more health than this. I think we need to get faster. Okay, new problem. Now Whiskash isn't using Earthquake, but instead Rain Dance. That means we go into the Kingdra fight with full health, but his powered up Water Pulse takes us to super low health anyway. He's still faster than us, so we still lose the exact same way as before. Maybe just a few more levels and we'll be faster? 
This is brutal. I don't even have to be this level for the Pokemon Champion using first form Pokemon half the time, and we're stuck on Gym 8. All right, I know a lot of you guys watch this in the background, but I'm gonna need everybody's full focus and attention for this one because this fight is insane. I'm not even gonna cover half of this battle because it went on for so long, but the Kingdra fight is crazy. Right away, he used Double Team, and we slammed, lucking out and paralyzing him. Our next slam would have finished him off now that we have the speed advantage, but then we missed. He used his rest to fully heal, then ate a berry to wake up right away. He used double team again, and we crit him to nearly take him out instantly, but of course he heals with hyper potion. After that, we slammed twice to take him to a sliver again, but he just used rest to heal again, and we missed three slams in a row, then got nailed with water pulse. We slammed again, he used double team, then we missed, and he rested. From here on though, you can just watch. I ran out of power points on slam. This guy left us alive for ages when he could have just used water pulse to finish us off at just about any time, and he keeps healing over and over and over. I nearly had him beat multiple times, but he just keeps hanging on. I'm gonna get like two more levels and hope that that's enough attack that I don't always leave him with a sliver. All right, level 81. This time, thanks to Whiskash using up some hyper potions, the rain wore off earlier, so Kingdra lost the speed advantage after getting double team. Problem is, we missed, so he got to use rest anyway. We lucked out though, and our next slam paralyzed him. He used double team again, we missed, but then he was fully paralyzed. That gave us another shot, and this time we hit, finally winning this horrible fight. And of course, right after all of that trouble, on the first try against Wally, we just get a one shot sweep. Wally, thank you for always being consistently embarrassing. I need a quick win after those last two gems. Now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our stats. Okay, I've gotta say some of these stats are pretty low for level 83, let alone a fully evolved Pokémon at level 83. Our defense is awesome, but our special attack of 137 is something we'd often see from our Pokémon in the level 70s. Not gonna lie, I'm really thinking that we can brute force our way to Wallace, then get taken out easily by him. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Dark Trainer Sydney. Not much to say about this one, we lost some attack at the start, but it didn't matter because we could just sweep the entire fight with Flamethrower. Let's hope Phoebe goes as well. Second is Ghost Trainer Phoebe. Wow, this one was actually a one-shot sweep too! You know, when I said I could just brute force my way to Wallace, I didn't quite mean like this. I thought they'd at least get some hits in. Third is Ice Trainer Glacia. We have Rock Slide, and it didn't miss, so it's just another sweep. Elite Four is never this easy. I'm sure Drake will give us some competition. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Drake. It starts great with Shellgon being a one-shot with Flamethrower. Second is Salamence, so he's taking out some of our attack early from Intimidate. Two Rock Slides do a pretty great job of taking him down, but he's faster, so he got a couple of Dragon Claws in first. Problem is, right after his Kingdra, and even with our Body Slams paralyzing him, his Surf easily made us faint. Of course the first water type we ran into made us faint. I think I'll need to be faster to stand a chance. Okay, trying again a few levels higher. We're actually still slower than Salamence, and sometimes he uses Rock Slide instead of Dragon Claw, resulting in us flinching on some attempts before we take him down. So we're actually faster than Kingdra now, but we still don't deal great enough damage. Oh, and of course he just knocks us out all the time. I'll have to do a few more run-throughs of the Elite Four to get to level 90. Level 90! So I was kind of hoping that Rock Slide would just do half of Kingdra's health and damage so we could hope for a flinch, uh, but it doesn't, and Surf still hits us extremely hard. Just so you can see what this process looks like, by the way, we're basically just one-shotting everything while grinding. We're at a point where nothing can stand a chance against us until it has a decent water move and a little bit of health, then they'll one-shot us. Make Her Go has got to be one of the most weirdly lopsided Pokémon I've used in a long time. I'm genuinely thinking that I'll have to be max level before we can even get to Wallace, and that's pretty crazy to think. 
I'm not going to complain too much about grinding here since one-shotting the Elite Four isn't a bad way to get experience, all things considered, but oh man am I ever not looking forward to the Pokemon Champion. At level 91, we're still slower than Salamence, but at least he missed a Rock Slide this time, so we went into the Kingdra fight with more health. Problem is, we missed a Rock Slide too, so even though we survived a Surf, we still couldn't take him down. We literally would have won if not for that miss. Maybe a few more levels and we can one-shot Salamence? Level 94, this time Kingdra just used Dragon Dance to gain the speed advantage then took us out with Surf. I swear, there must be a damage range going on. I don't feel like that should have fainted us. Level 96. Salamence hit Dragon Claw, but at least he missed Rock Slide this time, so we got by with 201 health. Rock Slide took out half of Kingdra's health, he flinched, then we landed another hit to finally get a knockout. Next was Flygon, who we mostly overpowered with Flamethrower. His Earthquake did solid enough damage, and he used a full restore, but Flygon isn't that terrifying of a Pokemon, and we're faster, so we just keep hitting Flamethrower while he keeps healing. Eventually, we got the knockout. Last was Altaria, who was a one-shot with Rock Slide. I can't believe we're finally done this awful fight. But it's time for it to get worse. Finally, Pokemon Champion Wallace. First is Waylord, so I just went for Flamethrower. We took a Water Spout, but because it does damage based on Waylord's current health, it wasn't too bad. He bought time with a full restore, but we still took him out. Ludicolo was a one-shot with Flamethrower, but then Water Onyx came out, so our attack is down from Intimidate. He was almost a one-shot from Rock Slide, but then he totally messed us up with Surf and fully healed with a full restore. This time we're faster and took him down, but we're really hurt. Tentacruel was out next though, and he pretty easily finished us off. Okay, I'm going to max level, and I'm just gonna try this fight tons of times and see what happens. Pokemon Champion at level 100, this time with a Shell Bell instead of Charcoal. Our Flamethrower did do less damage than usual, and it led to Waylord's Water Spout doing more damage than in my test runs with Charcoal, but we healed back up quite a bit, so I don't think it mattered. At least, I think it did less damage. Honestly, it's hard to tell. Ludicolo is still a one-shot, so that's even more health back. Water Onyx is here, so our attack is down, and this guy is often a problem since we can't afford for Rock Slide to miss. This time, though, it hit and one-shot him. That's actually thanks to a damage range. We don't always get that one-shot. Next is Tentacruel, and on tons of tries he just hits Hydro Pump to take out almost all of our health, but on this one he got a flinch, so we got a two-shot. We still have full health. We stand a chance. Melodic is mostly a special defense tank, so I took out half of her health with Rock Slide, she took out three quarters of our health in one surf, then we hit another Rock Slide to leave her with a sliver. I thought it was over, but she flinched. She used a full restore, but as I landed the next two Rock Slides, one crit for a knockout. Last is Whiskash, and I know that it has Earthquake and Surf, so I just went for Brute Force with Flamethrower. It did great damage, he hit us with Surf, then we hung on with only 10 health, giving us our chance to finally land the winning hit. No word of a lie, this one Wallace fight at level 100 with a Shell Bell took 22 attempts before we finally won. With that victory, we get into the Hall of Fame and win the run, but you know it's not over yet. There's a post-game fight with Steven Stone. Usually the fight is brutal and we can't win, but I mean, we're already max level, so why not, right? Maybe we actually stand a chance. I know he's got a lot of steel types. Then again, doesn't he have like four Pokemon with Earthquake? Either we're gonna breeze our way through or get totally destroyed. All right, so first is Skarmory who outsped us, but only used spikes. Well, that doesn't do anything if we only have one Pokemon, so that went fine. Our Meldo took pretty great damage off Flamethrower, but he also did quite a bit with Ancient Power before we took him down. Even got him to use a full restore. Maybe this'll go okay. Next is Cordelia, who we burned right away, but he just confused us and healed. Our very next flamethrower just burned him again, though. Then we took him out right after, so he was easy. You know what wasn't easy? Metagross showing up, outspeeding us, and one-shotting us from nearly full health with Earthquake. The worst part is that if I attacked first, I bet I could take him out. You know what? I'm coming back with a Quick Claw. Okay, this time our Meldo hits Water Pulse, so we lost tons of health from that, but he still went down more or less the same way. Cradilly only used Ingrain this time, so that went much quicker. Once we got to Metagross, our Quick Claw kicked in, we hit Flamethrower, and it was a one-shot. 
That actually worked. Unfortunately, right after was Claydol, who is also faster than us and easily took us down with Earthquake. All right, I don't even think Quick Claw can save us on this one. I'll take the hint, leave this fight alone, and get started on the next run. Man, that run was pretty brutal. Near the start of the run, I was having to grind quite a bit. Even near the start of the run, I was having to grind quite a bit. The middle wasn't too bad, but the moment I had to go to the psychic gym, the entire rest of the run became so much harder. That run really caught up with us. I really hope you guys like that run. The next Pokemon challenge should be up next week on Saturday, like usual, when we do Pokemon Red with only one Growlithe. People have been requesting that one for absolute ages, and a lot of people thought it wasn't going to happen because I did that Blaine run. Uh, I thought, eh, why not just do it now? As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. Outro time. Man, that run was crazy. <laughs> Honestly, that one felt grindier than a lot of um, recent ones, even though it was only having to grind in like, I guess a few specific places. Uh, well, I say that now that I think about it, there were actually quite a few places like when I had to grind before the rival on the uh, cycling road. That always sucks whenever I have to grind for that battle, just because the local Pokemon tend to paralyze you a lot. Although I guess there's a decent amount of trainers over there and the beach, well, the beach takes like five minutes to clear out. It's not really worth a ton of experience. I'm really happy that so many people suggested this one. Uh, I would not have realized that Meg Cargo is so <laughs> lame. Is that a good way to put it? Uh, if you guys didn't all say like, hey, just use the evolved one, because I obviously would have thought Slugma. Usually I do these first form challenges and everything. I had Slugma written down for ages, but I saw a few people like over the requests that I've noticed for it say Meg Cargo instead and they explain why. And when I looked up the stats, I realized, oh yeah, that might actually be way harder. Like, uh, Slugma and Meg Cargo have almost the same on every stat. <laughs> it's, it's nearly the same, either than the defense and the special defense being much higher. So it was such a weird run to do. And I'm happy I evolved, by the way, because if I didn't evolve, I, I don't know what other problems there would be. Probably just couldn't beat it. Probably couldn't beat it with a Slugma, I'm gonna guess. But who knows? Anyway, this was a super long voiceover for what is probably going to be a super long video. I guess we'll see. I'm actually a little bit behind. I'm recording this voiceover the day after I normally would, just because I have been so unbelievably busy with everything and work gets all bunched up. So I'm going to rush to get this audio all edited before I go to bed tonight. And I also need to get the Let's Play stuff edited because I don't want to work on my day off because that sucks, but I might have to anyway. We'll see. Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, have a nice day. Hi hey Rocky, how's it going? Hi, Sebu. How's it going?